Hello everyone, this is Gaurang Raje from TE Electronics and in this video we'll be looking at basic assembly language programs for the AT51 microcontroller. I'll be titling the program for addition of two 8-bit numbers, multiplication of two 8-bit numbers using the MUL instruction and also without using the MUL instruction as well as a program for the blinking of LEDs. I'll be writing and running these programs in Kiel's New Vision 5 software. So let's get started. First, start the software. You have to get started with the first program for addition of two 8-bit numbers. Create a new project. In the project tab, select the option for new New Vision project. In your directory, create a new folder for the project. And in that, create a file with the same name and click on save. Here, we need to select a microcontroller model. So, I've chosen this model which is 89V51RD2, a 40 MHz microcontroller. Click on OK. Select No. Now, on this left hand side pane, right click on the target folder on the left hand side pane right click on the target folder select options for target target one here we can edit the properties of our microcontroller model so first in the target tab i'll edit the clock frequency i'll set it as 11.0592 megahertz then in the output tab select create hex file and in the debug tab click on limit speed to real time then click on ok click on file and select new now we can save this file give it the same name with a dot asm extension click on save now here we can type our program After writing the program, click on save, then expand the target file section and right click on source group 1. Here, um, click on add existing files to group source group 1. In here, um, choose the all files option for file of type and then choose your .asm file and click on add just once. Then click on close. Next. Click on the translate option. We can see that the uh, hex file is being assembled. Here, we'll get a message of zero errors and zero warnings. If we do not have any errors or warnings, then click on the build option and our hex file will be created and linked here. Then, to execute this program, go to the debug tab and then click on start slash stop debug session. Now, in this new window, we'll have our code here and also a pane which shows all the registers with their values. We'll also have a disassembly window which shows the address of each instruction. In this window, we can either run the whole code using this option or single step it using the step option. Now, just to explain the code before executing it, we are starting the code with the org directive at 00h. This basically sets the starting address of the program. Then we jump to org 30h and then start our main program. We move the value 30h to the accumulator and 0a0h to r0 register. Then add the two values. Now move the result from the accumulator to register r1. So let's execute it step by step. On the registers pane you can see the changes in the register values as we go through.
So here we can see that in R1 register we get a result which is D0H. So for our second program now which is multiplication of two 8-bit numbers we are in the debug tab. The procedure followed up to this is the same as the previous code. Now here again we start our program from 00H which is the starting address then jump to 30H so that we leave some space in between for our interrupts. After that the logic for our multiplication we are first moving the value of 12H to A register and 0A1H to register B. Then we use the mul a b instruction. After this operation, the uh, higher order byte of the result will be stored in register b and the lower order byte will be stored in register a. So we are moving the value of register a to r1 register and the value of register b to r0 register and um, we get our output. So if we run our program, we get 0b in register r0 and 52 in register R1. For this program of multiplication of two 8-bit numbers without using the mul instruction, I have replaced the mul multiplication logic with this longer logic. So initially we clear the register A and register B which is accumulator and the B register and then move the same data as the previous program into the registers R0 and R1. So R0 contains 12H and R1 contains 0A1H. Then what we are doing is adding one of these two numbers to the accumulator repeatedly as many times as the other operand. I have used the add A comma R1 instruction which means I am adding the data 0A1H to the accumulator as many times as 12H. So to do that I have used DJNZ instruction which loops to this point again while decrementing the value in R0. So when the value in R0 that is 12H becomes 0 it will go forward and not loop back. Also to account for the carry which could be generated in this operation I have used a JNC instruction along with increment b. So whatever the carry is that will get stored in b. So basically the accumulator will contain the lower order byte of the result and register b will contain the higher order byte. So let's run the program and here we get the same result as before which is r0 contains 0b and r1 contains 52. So for our fourth program which is blinking of LEDs, we are basically moving uh, data values to a port P1 which serves as an output port which would be connected to LEDs. For output operation, we are first moving data 00H to the port P1 to initialize it. Then we are going to move complementary pair of data values to the port P1 successively to show the blinking. So we are moving first 0AAH and then 55H to the port P1. Then after every move instruction we are calling a delay subroutine for a time delay. For this we are using a call instruction which has a range of 2K bytes. Then again after moving 55H to the port P1 we will call the delay subroutine and then Finally, we will loop back again to the top so that this logic is executed continuously. For the delay subroutine itself, we have three nested loops with counters 08H, FFH and FFH again stored in R2, R1 and R0 registers. We are using DJNZ instruction for the looping along with those counters and an NOP instruction here. Finally, we have a return instruction which would go back to the main program. Now to execute this program, first click on run and then since we are using output ports, we won't get any register uh, panel here. Instead, go to the peripherals tab and then through IO ports, click on the port that you have used. In this case it is port P1. We can see the changes in the values of the P1 bits. Also to visualize the output we can go to the analysis tab here. So to get the value of the P1 output port 
click on setup now we can use this dialog box to add the port p1 value click on this icon and type in p1 then click on close here you can see the waveform forming so it goes from 0 to 1 and from our given delay it will complete the cycle so in this way we'll get such a waveform which will continue on according to our time delay so this has been the first four basic programs of assembly language programming for 8051 microcontroller thank you